Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, in part 9.4.2 of Mastering Multi-Threading series, we are diving into the fundamental aspects of multi-threading in C-Shop. Thread.Volatile Read and Thread.Volatile Write. These methods play a crucial role in ensuring that data shared between different parts of our program is handled correctly, especially in a multi-threaded environment. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Thread.Volatile Read and Thread.Volatile Write in C-Sharp. Let's start with the Thread.Volatile Read. This C-Sharp method guarantees that when one part of a program reads a value from memory, it gets the most up-to-date value that was written there by another part of a program. It's like making sure everyone sees the latest information on a bulletin board without missing any updates. Okay, so let's understand how to use it in c -sharp program. Let's say we have a static flag variable of byte data type and it is initialized with value 0. That's what I have written private static byte flag is equal to 0. And now let's imagine that another thread might change the value of the flag. And we are interested to get the most up-to-date value. How we can do that? Simply, we need to use thread.volatile read method. That's why I wrote byte result is equal to thread.volatile read ref flag. So this statement basically making sure that we get the most up-to-date value. Whatever the value that we are receiving, we are storing into the result variable of byte data type. And finally, I'm just printing this result variable value into this console window. Right? Via this statement, console.write line, the value of flag is result. So basically, thread.volatile is used whenever we want to get the most up-to-date value which is updated by another thread. Okay, so now let's talk about its counterpart which is nothing but the thread.volatile write. This method ensures immediate visibility of a newly written value to other parts of the program. Essentially, when one part of our program writes a value to memory using volatile write, it becomes instantly accessible to other that might want to read it. So here again, let's say, we have a static flag variable of byte data type that I have initialized with 0 and then some other part of the program writes a new value to flag. Here what I am doing, I am just assigning one value to new value variable of byte data type. And finally what I am doing, I am just going to use this volatile write method. Thread.volatile write, ref, flag and the new value, whatever the new value that we have stored over here. So what it does, it is just going to change the value of the flag and make sure that this change value is immediately visible other parts of the program that might want to read that value. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see one complete example where I will be using both thread.volatile read and thread.volatile write that basically complements each other. Okay, so now we are in Visual Studio. Here I'm trying to demonstrate a simple real-time monitoring system where one thread updates a shared variable representing a sensor reading while another thread continuously checks this variable for a threshold condition. In order to show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named volatile read and write demo that has real-time program.cs file. In real-time program.cs file, there is a class named real-time program that has two variables, sensor reading and a stop monitor. I have initialized sensor reading with zero and stop monitoring with false value. Then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. Here first I am just printing this statement because I am just giving the demo of volatile read and volatile read method. So I am just printing this statement into console window. That's what I have written this statement. Next what I am doing, I am creating two threads. One thread that is going to update the sensor reading and the another thread is going to monitor the sensor reading. That's what I have written a statement of thread update thread is equal to new thread update sensor. So this update sensor thread function, it is responsible for update the sensor reading. And here I'm just creating another thread, thread monitor thread is equal to new thread monitor sensor. So this thread function, it is responsible for monitoring the sensor reading. And after creating these two threads, I'm starting it. Next, what I'm doing, I'm just writing this statement thread.sleep5000. So I'm just making this thread to sleep for five seconds so that these two threads run for a while and then finally I am just changing the value of the stop monitoring variable. Here I am setting the value as true. So basically I am just making sure that both threads stops after 5 seconds. 
So here in update sensor method, what I am doing, I am creating an object of random class over here. And then I am writing while negation of stop monitoring. Basically, here at the initial point of the time, we have this stop monitoring value as false. False or negation, it will make us true. So control will come and execute these statements. So in these statements, what I am doing, I am generating a random number between 1 to 100. And that's what we are getting the reading value. So I'm storing this reading value into the new reading. Then what I'm doing, I'm just using this volatile write method. Update the sensor reading value with the new reading. That's what I have written thread dot volatile read ref sensor reading new reading. This is statement basically update the sensor reading. And then I'm just simulating a delay between updates. That's what I have written thread dot sleep 1000. So overall, this update sensor method works as a sensor simulator. It simulates a sensor by generating random double value between 0 and 100 at intervals of 1 second and it uses the thread dot volatile write method update the sensor reading variable with the new value. That's what this update sensor method is doing. Now let's see the monitor sensor method what it is doing. Here again I am writing while not of a stop monitoring. This statement will verify what is the value of a stop monitoring. If it is a false, then it is just making as true and this statement are going to get executed. You see, in while loop, what I have written, I am just reading the sensor reading with the help of thread dot volatile read. That's what I have written, ref sensor reading. So sensor reading variable is updated by this update sensor method. Monitor sensor method, we are going to read that particular value, the latest value with the help of thread dot volatile read. That's what I have written thread dot volatile read ref sensor reading. So this statement will give this latest value that I am storing into the current reading variable of double data type. And then I am checking a threshold condition. If current reading is greater than 80, then just print this statement alert high temperature detected current reading. Whatever the current reading variable value is it is holding that value it is just going to get concatenated to this statement and print into this console window. And then to simulate the continuous monitoring, I have written this sleep statement, thread.sleep500. So overall, this monitor sensor thread continuously checks the sensor reading variable using thread.volatile read to get the most up-to-date value and it checks if current reading exceeds a threshold, in this case 80, and triggers an alert if the condition is met. That's what I have written this alert statement via this console.write line statement over here. So now you have seen this monitor sensor method and update sensor method. Now if you see I have written thread.sleep5000 and I am just you know changing the variable stop monitoring equal to true. So why these two statements I have written because I want these two methods update sensor and monitor sensor runs until stop monitoring variable is marked as true. So basically I am just giving an opportunity to run these two threads for 5 seconds. Then I'm changing this variable stop monitoring to true. So these two methods update sensor and monitor sensor runs until stop monitoring variable is marked as true. So basically both rates run concurrently for five seconds. Why? Because I have written this statement, right? And I'm just making this stop monitoring true after five seconds on. In this update sensor method, we are checking if while not stop monitoring, if it is if true, then it is just going to make as a false and this statement is not going to get executed. So then and there it is just going to stop this process. Similarly, I have used here also in while loop negation of a stop monitoring and then if it is true, then it is just making as a false with the help of this things and this statement is not going to get executed and then and there it is just going to get stopped. So, so here a stop monitoring is playing a crucial role for stopping this monitor sensor and update sensor method completely. Okay, so now you have seen the program. Let me execute this and show this output to you. So here I am just going to execute this program with the help of PowerShell. So I have written this statement and now let me go and click enter. You see, this alert high temperature detected current reading is this one. Alert high temperature detected current reading is this one. Whatever the you know current reading we are getting, that is the up to date one as per the timing when this statement is going to get executed right so now you have seen how thread dot volatile read and thread dot volatile write ensure that the most recent sensor reading is accessed and updated across different threads 
it is just going to minimize synchronization issue in a multi-threaded environment okay that brings me to end of my session to sum up thread dot volatile read and thread dot volatile write are essential tools when dealing with shared data across multiple threads they ensure that changes are immediately visible and that the most recent data is accessed without caching or optimization basically it is just going to prevent synchronization issue that can arise in multi-threaded environment although these tools primarily address memory visibility issues they do not provide atomicity or guarantee thread safety for compound operation involving multiple variables. For more complex synchronization requirements, other techniques like clocks, mutex, atomic types in the form of interlocked class in CSAP, or higher level synchronization constructs like you know monitor, mutex, or semaphore might be more suitable. So you need to decide which synchronization technique is best suitable for your requirement. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.